Hello, it's me, and I've been asked to do a tutorial on this mix-up puzzle here, the 3x3 mix-up uh, plus, actually. So this is a 3x3 mix-up plus by Wood Eden, um, and it's a neat little puzzle. Uh, basically, what makes this a mix-up plus is, well, first, in order to solve this, you have to know how to solve a, um, well, a mix-up puzzle, and you have to know how to solve a... 3x3. Three three. Well, it's kind of the same puzzle, but anyway, so basically what a mix-up is, is it's just like a 3x3, three three. it can be solved like a 3x3, three three, scrambled like a 3x3, three three, but you can do this interesting um, middle movement where you hold it to the side and then you can turn it like this, and then turn this all around as well. So you can actually substitute or swap edges for centers and centers for edges, which means that you can end up turning these edges 90 degrees off, getting what appears to be parity type situations. So that's that. Now, if you don't know how to solve a mix-up puzzle, I can refer you to the tutorial on how to do that, but you don't actually need to know that for the purposes of this tutorial because I'm gonna go through really the solve of the of the mix-up, uh, mix-up, yeah, mix-up um, puzzle, uh, mix-up version. So anyway, uh, this, salt, this scramble is just like a three by three, but you see a little bit more noise here. You see more pieces here. When I put this in mix-up position, you can see that it's slicing through here, so I'm able to separate these pieces out as well. So when confronting a new puzzle like this, uh, I try to correlate it with its most similar puzzle. So it looks like the corners and the edges, the outer edges and the centers are just like the mix-up and can be solved exactly like the mix-up. So it's gonna be a question of what to do with these pieces. So it seems on the surface that just solving it as a mix-up puzzle and then dealing with these guys is the way to do it. So before embarking on this, I like to see if I can design a commutator or an algorithm to show me how to move these things all around. Uh, and the way that I do that is I pick random movements and uh, just like a commutator, like an RU, RIUI, I see if I can isolate a piece, do a middle move, and then do URUI, RI, some kind of a, um, uh, just reverse the previous commutator. So I'm gonna do a middle move. So I'll move this up. So this is an M move, and this follows the same uh, description as L. So this would be an MI, then I'll do a U, and then I'll do a M. But I'm only going to move it down. I'm not. Uh, I'm not going to move it all the way down. I'm just going to move it down to here. So notice these all stay the same, but this piece here can be isolated. Aha! As soon as I see a piece that can be isolated, then I know that I'm in business because I can do a middle move and substitute this for another piece. So I'll just do a D move over here to put this in place. Then when I undo the original algorithm and move this back, the only thing that'll be affected is this piece, this piece, and one other. So I'm going to move this back and then we'll just undo what I just did. And that's gonna be L, rather MI, UI, M, and then move this back to a D. So we take a look at what we did, and you can see that all we did was affect these three pieces. So now I have an algorithm that takes this, moves it to here, this is moved to here, and this is moved to here. Now, orientation has to be noted with what happens as well, because notice that this did not get flipped. This just shifted over here. So whatever I have in this spot will shift to here. This came here and flipped upside down. So this will go from a normal position to an upside down position, and this also flipped upside down. So basically, this will come to here and flip upside down. This will come to here and stay the same, <clears throat> the same direction. And this will come to here and flip upside down. So just uh, to, to do it again for practice and to get them back, this should slip to here, this should rotate here, and this should rotate to here. So there's going to be a MI, U, M, then we do a D, and then I reverse it, MI, UI, M, DI. So indeed that's what happened. One more should get this to here, to here, to here. So go MI, U, M, D, M, I, U, I, M, D, I. And there it is. So, now that we've defined that, we're going to go ahead and uh, see if we can't scramble this up. So, what's the best way of scrambling this? Well, obviously, you can start off with a 3x3 three three scramble, which is not unusual. And I'm going to do a couple of mix-ups, mostly to... Um, get uh, these scrambled here. So I'm just gonna go up like this and then do a 2U. So I'm gonna maintain everything in its 
unmixed up position. And my purpose of this is just to see about scrambling these guys here, lifting them out to enhance the challenge. Because after all, that's why I bought this puzzle, right? Challenge, move this up, double turn. So I'm gonna to continue to do that all around the puzzle. Now I'll say this to give a little commentary as I'm doing this. The only issue with this puzzle, it's not really an issue, but something to bear in mind with the strategy that I'm gonna use, is you may have to do two three by three solves. Now, that's probably not gonna be a big issue because if you have this puzzle, you probably know how to do a three by three solve, and I lay odds that you can probably do it a whole lot faster than I can or ever will, because speed cubing has never been my thing. So if you find yourself having to do two three by three solves, it's not a huge deal breaker with the strategy, I don't think. But when doing a mix-up, you might put it in a position of potential parity as you reduce it. And that could cause a lot of chaos and frustration and throwing things around if you have to try to undo what you did. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Most of them have been taken away from their respective places. And I would just do mix-ups. So I do one turn over here. I really like how this puzzle moves. It's very smooth. And by mixing it up, I'm basically putting centers or edges where center should be, centers where edges should be. And I'm gonna continue messing this up beyond all recognition. Okay, so the first step is gonna be solve it like a mix-up puzzle. To solve it like a mix-up puzzle, it means that uh, we're gonna basically first off put our centers in, the proper centers. So I always start off with green, and then I wanna do the opposite one, which is blue. If you don't have that memorized, you can do any one of these. But this is just gonna be a matter of positioning. I gotta get this blue and move it in this position without moving this green one out. So to move it down here, what I can do is bump this out of the way. I'm gonna move this up. So this green one was taken down, but now I can move this blue into where this yellow orange was because that was opposite the green. Move it in and just remember to bring it down so it's in central position. So this is good and this is good. Then I pick any equatorial type center. In this case, we've got white. So let's correlate white with the blue. Here's the blue on top and the white over here. That means red is next. So here's red. So I'm gonna do pretty much the same thing. I'm gonna to try to put this where this is supposed to be. So move this to the side. And I'm gonna move this up like thus. And now I'm going to move this where it's supposed to be. Now, the problem with doing that is this blue one is gonna be in the way. So we don't wanna do it from, from that perspective. Because when I move this up, this blue one's gonna be taken out also. Uh, if I do it here and I move it up, this orange one will be moved, but we don't really care. So. Basically, this will move up, and this was moved out of the way too, but we, but that's, that's fine. We can easily move that back. So move this in place and move it down. So in that way, we've got green, blue, red, and white. Uh, to position it, uh, just kind of play with it. If that didn't quite meld uh, with you, it, uh, it's just kind of a, a matter of doing, uh, of positioning. So we've got white, red. The next one is what's opposite white, which is yellow. So find the yellow center, it's over here. Now we want to do the same thing, move it to the side. Then I'm gonna move this from center position to edge position because this is in edge position. Make sure I'm not gonna disrupt any of my centers around the side that I already have and I don't. So this moves from center position to edge position. I'm gonna take this center, which is in edge position, put it in the position over here, then move this back to center position. So we've got this is in, this is in, this is in, this is in, and this is in. We have one more to go. Uh, and that's gonna be the orange, here's the orange. So how am I gonna get this back in? Well, we can say the same thing. This is in edge position. We can move this in edge position, but that'll knock that out. So every layer or every angle that we look at this, we're gonna knock a center out. So the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna actually do an algorithm to move this, if this is in edge position and this is in center position, if I move this just to the side, notice this is in edge position and what was in center position is now in edge position. So all I have to do is the beginner's technique of moving this to here as I would a middle layer and then we simply move this back and you'll find that this will be in the center, uh, this will be in the center position. Um, 
I'm not going to affect any, I'm going to affect these edges as well, but we don't really care because we haven't done them yet. So we do the algorithm. Whoop. U R U I R I U I F I U F. Then we simply move this back into center position and you'll find that all of the centers are now in. So the first hurdle in your sequential solve is done. Okay, the next thing to do is let's get these edges. So all edges are in edge positions and all centers are in center positions. We're unmixing it up, so to speak. Now we want to get this and turn them in the right way. Now we don't know if it's supposed to be clockwise or counterclockwise, but we don't care about that as of yet. So how are we going to turn this without taking everything out? Well, what I want to do is we're going to take this and move this to the center position over here. Because if I move it to the center position over here and turn it, I'm going to take this out, right? This is going to be affected. So we're just going to bump this out of the way, put this into center position here. And all that did was put this into another center position. This is not touched. And I'm just going to rotate it once. Splat. I'm not going to give an algorithm to it because you can easily see the setup. Move this back into this position here, this center position. And this goes right up to edge position. So that, in essence, turned that, um, ups, turned that by 90 degrees. Same thing here. Take this, move it from edge position to the center position just below it. To get it away from here, move it to the center position just to the right or the left. These won't be affected. And nothing from this plane. I basically have to take it out of this plane. Then I turn this 90 degrees. Move it back to center position, up to edge position, and that's in. Um, now you can have any number of those, but it's really done the same way. Move it to center position, move it just to the right center position. Turn it 90 degrees, move it back, move it up, and you're good. So, basically, you took it, if this were a mix-up cube, it would be like this. Not solved, but it would be like this. Now, here's the thing. You could start the process of reducing these using the algorithm, but you might have this in, an, in a wrong rotation, so you'd end up with a parity. If you solve it and it's in a parity situation, you're going to end up taking these out. So we have to see if these are in the right configuration. Now, you could have tried to look at that as you were putting it in, but um, it doesn't work completely. So anyway, I'm going to start off by doing a 3x3 three three solve. And I'm just putting these edges in. I'm doing my cross, cross over here. Not the inner edges, but the outer edges. And I just want to see if I end up in a parity type situation. So here is this here. Basically, I'm not doing anything earth shattering. I'm just getting the cross over here. This is upside down. All right, so you can see I, I have the cross. And now I slide in. I slide in the corners. I told you I was slow. This is going to come over to here, moving in my corners the way that I do. Okay, so this is all in the first layer. Very quickly get the second layer in with the al algorithm of the beginners. Again, I assume knowledge on how to solve a 3x3. Three three. If not, go out and learn how to solve a 3x3. Three three. Uh, this will come down here and turn. And one more. Now you might get lucky. Well, actually more than one more. You might get lucky in that you have no parity, one type of parity, or two. There are two possible types of parity. And I'll see if I can't demonstrate both. Okay, so here's a middle layer. So now we're going to try to rotate. We're going to do the orientation of the last layer here. So we're going to get the last layer, and you notice something very wrong. One is rotated correct, and three are not. So that's an impossibility in a 3x3, three three, but you can get with a mix-up cube. Just to show you what that looks like, F R U R I U I F I. So when you see this, this has to be rotated. So all you have to do with that, now imagine if you did the entire reduction only to find this, you're going to end up putting these out. So you just, um, you just turn this 180 degrees. Move it down to a center position. Move it across to the other center position, just to the right. And instead of doing a 90 degree turn, you do 180. Bang. And now you move it back to the center position, back up here, and you can move this as well. So now you can see these are all rotated correctly. Um, these were taken out, but that doesn't really matter. They're all in there, but not exactly right. I'm going to get these back real quick, but, but you don't really have to. Okay, 
to you, drawer to you, drawer to you. Okay, so these are all back. Now that we have this, the question is, do we have another kind of a parity, which appears to be a corner parity, but it actually isn't. It's another edge parity. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and rotate all of these in using 3x3 three three techniques. Okay, so these are all rotated correctly. Now I'm going to get my corners in. None of these corners are aligned, so I'm going to do a corner swap. 2R U, 2R U I 2R. Again, this is 3x3 three three strategy. I'm just doing a 3x3 three three solve. You can do it any way you want. These two corners are in, so I'm going to do, no, do another corner swap. 2R U, 2R U I 2R. 2R U I 2R U 2R. Okay. So these corners are in, so you're doing your 3x3 your three three solve. You see this is in, this is in, and up, oh, these two are not in. So if I try to do an adjacent edge swap, these are going to be swapped. Now I can already tell I'm probably going to get some questions because you're going to find that you're going to try to put these in and they're all going to be in, but you're going to have two corners that need to be swapped but can't be. And the question is, why is that? How do I fix it? Well, the problem is not the corners that are having the parity. Solve for the corners, you're going to see it's the edges that actually have the parity. So here's the situation that you might get. Now understand, this is one parity situation that you're going to get where two edges have to be swapped. I can swap those, but it's going to swap these. But here's what it might look like when you try to solve it um, in this position. It might look like this. So you go through your solve. And you see you've got all these edges in, you got, you got your cross first, you're getting your corners in, these two are in, but these two are not. So you might end up approaching the parity like this, where this corner, the red, white, and blue, belongs here, and this one, the orange, white, and blue, belongs here. So if that happens, what do you do? Well, the issue is not these two. So what I would do at this point is I would go ahead and solve for the corners. Do an adjacent corner swap. Don't worry about the edges yet. 2R U, 2R UI, 2R, UID, 2R UI, 2R U, 2R. So you're going to find that it's going to put these in, but you're going to uncover that parity that we were talking about, that these two are an, are an issue. So what I would say is when you get that, make it to where the two edges that are out are right next to each other, that they're adjacent. You don't want them opposite like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and solve, the, solve this, 2R to U, 2R to U, 2R to U, it's an adjacent edge swap that created misplacement over here, put the parity here. Now I'm going to do, I'm sorry, that was an opposite edge swap, do an adjacent edge swap, which will get this back. 2R U, 2R U, 2R to U, 2R to U, 2R U, 2R U, I, 2R. Okay. So now you have it in the configuration that you want. This and this are out. Now here's the fix that you're going to do with this. I'm not going to get into too much details why it works. It works because basically you're swapping the middles and the corners at the same time, sort of. But hold it to where you have the ones that are out in the top right and the back right. So on the right side, it's on the up side, uh, the top right and the back right. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be doing a commutator which rotates this around, but you're going by but you're going by 60 degree increments, basically. Um, so what you're going to do first is you're going to do R-I-U-R-U-I. Pretty easy to remember. And you're going to take this layer over here, I think that's called the E layer, and then just move it down by one click until you can get it into mix-up position. Then you just reverse what you did, which is U R I U I R. And now you keep doing that all around the puzzle. So you then go ahead and do another 60 degree, degree click. Do it again. R I U R U I. Click it down here and do and just undo what you did. U R I U I R. You keep doing that 10 times, I believe. Turn, 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 turn. And again. Turn, 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 turn. Undoing it. Move it again. R I U. R U I, turn it again, U R I U I R, and again, whoops, whoop, don't lose track, turn, 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 and again, turn, 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 
turn. And if you do it 10 times, you'll find it's going to put them all back in. So that's kind of the mix-up trick. That's a, the, the main trick to the mix-up puzzle. So you have your 3x3 three three solved, but that was your first 3x3 three three solved. If you want, you can keep it into this position, but the whole purpose of doing this is to get it out of any parity situation so you're not in any danger. I prefer to not keep it in, the, in this position, but you can just kind of for the challenge. Because now it's just a matter of doing my positioning, because this to here, this to here, this to here. So, so far right off the bat, I know that this will come to here and flip, so that's going to be good. So we want this to be over here, so that's pretty good. This white one will come to here and it'll also flip, so that's going to be good. So I'm going to put two in, this will slide into here, but, um, and not be in, but that's okay. So the blue one and the white one should be done. So we'll do our algorithm, M I U M. it's not the full one, it's just uh, 60 degrees, then do a D. Then reverse that, you can see that put that in here. M I U I M, and move this back. And lo and behold, this is in and this is in. Um, now you can take some other opportunities and see, see what you've got, but you're gonna be moving it all around. So this will come to here, but will be flipped wrong. So if that's the case, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go like this, because now this will go to here and be flipped correctly. What about this? Well, if I can put a green one, like this, I'm just going to move that down. So this will go to here, this will go to here, this will go to here, um, in the right configuration. So we'll go ahead and do the algorithm. Turn. And turn. Okay, this is in and this is in. So like I say, I've, I've left the realm of the 3x3 three three solve. I'm over it. Um, let's take this and slide them into here. All right, so in this configuration, this will slide into here, right side up. Let's find an orange. Here's an orange here. Now, it'd be nice if there was an orange and red, right? Oh, there is. Except it's 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 not going to work because the red has to be upside down. So uh, here's an orange. Now, if there's an orange with a red upside down, we're doing good. Nope. Okay. So this will come to here. This will come to here, and this will come to here upside down. So turn, cross. Just doing that algorithm. It's a quick one to do, it's easy, it's fun, and now this is in. Okay, do we have a green that we can put in? Sure. Move it into position, this will slide over here. Do we have a blue that can use a friend? And we do, this. Um, an upside down red could also be useful, but we don't have any of those yet. Okay, so the green will be in and the blue will be in. So M I U M D that moves that in turn turn that moves that in and bang. All right, we keep going. So anytime we see something upside down, we're going to put this over here and see if I can't match it up to the right color here, which in this case would be green. Any lonely greens and yep, this one. I'm going to do this because this will not flip, so this will come into here. This is nice because this will come into here. Now, if there is a red with a red one upside down, nope, okay. So we'll go ahead and do the algorithm. And turn. Okay, so you can see we're getting more and more what we need. Okay, so this is going to be placed in this position because it's upside down. Find a lonely yellow, which is here. Find an errant white, which is here. So I'm going to take this white and move this down to here. Okay, so at the end of the day, this white will be solved. This will come to here, but be upside down. This will come to here and be fine. Turn and boom. Okay, uh... I'm going to move this into this position, so we'll find an orange one. Oop. Okay, this will go to here. Do we have a blue that can use some help? Yep. Okay, this will go here, and this will be replaced by a red one here. So like I say, it's a fast and fun little commutator. Boom, and we're good. Okay, this will come up here. Uh, Let's put a red one in over here. Okay, any blues that could use a helping hand? It must be this one. 
This is just a matter of positioning, putting it into place. Okay, this to here, this to here, and this white one. Oh, why don't I do this? Watch this. Because this white one will come to here and be flipped right side up. This will come to here and be flipped right side up, and this will, won't flip at all. So we should put in two. Put it up here, down, this is in, and down, across, this is in, up, across, this is in, and down. Probably made a lot of progress with that one. Okay, this will go to a red space. How about here? Well, yeah. How about here? Because then I can move this in to here. So I kind of get all my reds back. Quickly move it. Okay, these are now right set up. Okay, I'm holding this over here to match it to a green. You can see we're getting down to the last few. Okay, this will come down to here and be in. This is going to go somewhere that it doesn't really matter. But where's another one that's out? I'm down to the last few, it's this. So we have a little bit of a dilemma because this, this kind of needs to come out. So maybe what I'll do is I'll focus on this one first. Put this where this is supposed to be here. And um, I'm just gonna substitute this for another green. So basically this will come here and be in. This will come here, knock this out, but it'll, it'll be in the right position. And this will come here and be rotated wrong, which is okay now and down turn up across and down okay uh, that was not very smart because this is not the configuration that I want but that's okay I'm gonna have to get a sacrificial lamb here unfortunately I have to take one out I uh, didn't plan that very well but I'm gonna take this and move this out from here I just want to put another Yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be tough. Here's here's what we'll do. We'll take this. This has to be turned right side up. So this will go to here. This. Oh yeah, this this will work. Okay. So here's what I'm gonna do. So I need to get another one upside down to move out of this position. And down. Turn. Up. And down. Okay. This is really kind of the same, only you have it opposite. And I didn't manage to move something upside down. Okay, what I'll have to do, I think, let's move this down here. This will move here and be upside down. This will move here and be upside down. This will move here and be upside down. Um, let me do it like this. Okay, so at the end of the day, Okay, the answer is probably a lot easier than I thought. This will come over here and be upside down. This will slide here and be right side up. This will come here and be right side up. Okay, at least I'll move this away from here. So go up. So let me just go through that. I need to pull these away from each other. So this will come here and be uh, right side up. I guess I might as well do the right color, put this one here. Okay, so this will be green and right side up. This will be yellow and right side up. This will come here and be upside down. So I'll have two different ones that are upside down. One will be green, one will be yellow. So we'll do our algorithm. Turn and up, turn and down, bang. Okay, so that was pretty good. Move those away from there. So this will move into a green one, we'll say here. Okay, this will come here and be right side up, so that's good. This I'm gonna move into here. I just have to put it, there we go. So this will come here and be right side up. This will go over here and be right side up. This will flip and go over here and be upside, uh, and, and be right side up. So that should do it. This should be the last algorithm. So up, turn, down, in, up, turn, and down, and boom. So there you have it. It's all reduced, and it's basically just a three by three solve at this point. Um, now that you've done the reduction, so we'll go ahead and do our cross, and we know that there's no parity because we took the time to make sure that uh, parity wasn't going to be a problem. Turn and turn. The puzzle feels like it might pop, but the quality is actually very good. I have yet to have it pop despite all the punishment that I've put through it. 
And I put these puzzles through a lot of punishment. Alright. Move this in here. And do my slow and laboring beginner's method. How many years can I be a beginner? A lot. So that's the middle layer. You can see no parity here. F R U R I U I F I. And now we can finish our cross. We'll do it this way. R to U R I. I'll put the corners in first. Less motion that way. Rotate all the corners up. Once they're rotated up, do my corner swap. Turn, and now you can see that there's no parity because I've got these that have to be swapped here. To R, to U, to R, to U, to R, to U, to R, U, to R, U, to R, to U, to R, to U. And there you have it. So, mix up plus is done. It's a neat little puzzle. Basically, it takes the concept of the mix up puzzle and just adds a reductive step which you could easily reduce how to reduce it based on making a very simple commutator that does a three cycle uh, so basically your classic strategies in solving more complex puzzles um, more types of variants of this in the future thanks for watching